Hey guys, welcome back to Predatory Fins. In today's video, we're gonna do things a little bit different. Um, Lisa's not here today, I'm by myself. And as you can see, I'm gonna be hanging out with uh, some of my friends here. Um, I haven't got a name for them yet. But they're all looking good and growing fast. Hopefully they'll be going to the big tank soon. But I'm gonna sit over here today. Ah, ah Kenny old sucks. And basically, what we're gonna do is talk about how to keep our fish alive, okay? No. It's 12.46 in the morning. You think I'm gonna answer this? Hey guys, welcome back to Predatory Fins. Um, in today's video, I wanna try to help some people out there, like especially the new hobbyists, understand how to keep your fish alive, okay? I get a lot of phone calls every week, pretty much almost every other day, um, and it's always two problems, okay? And these two problems, they have the same solution. Now, number one problem and number one call that I get is like, hey Rod, um, my fish won't eat. Can you please try and help me out? I, I, I don't wanna lose my fish. Okay, uh, where'd you get your fish from? From us? No, okay. Well, I'm still gonna help you, all right? I, I don't care about if you got the fish from somebody else. I just wanna... Bro. Hi there, how are you? You wanna be on camera? I know, I know, I know, I fed you already. Yeah, yeah, you just wanna say hi to the camera, right? Okay, well, so I gotta say hi to Mr. Bubbles. Um, he's gonna be coming through the video more than, than often. But anyway, so that was that's one of the things that I get a lot of times, like, you know, my fish won't eat. Second is, um, I bought the fish and it's dying. Can you please help me? Guys. The number one thing on fish keeping, okay? And look, I made a mistake when I started. I'm not, I'm not no expert. I wasn't born like a baby, like, oh, I'm a fish expert. Look at me, look at me. No, 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 I'm still not a fish expert. I'm still learning every day. But the number one thing is the water, okay? That's the number, number one cause of death on, on fish. It's your water quality, okay? now. A lot of people think, oh, I left the tank up and running, it's cycle, I'm allowed to put fish in, I don't know, it's, it's ready, it's ready. I went to the store, did a test, and they said my water's good. There's no way to test for live bacteria, okay? So for example, if you have your tank up and running for two weeks, no fish, you take the water there, they test for pH, ammonia, nothing, okay, your water's good, but, there's no live bacteria, okay? For your fish to live, it needs the live bacteria to colonize so the bacteria can eat the ammonia that your fish create. How does your fish create ammonia? Well, they can poop, they can pee, just like us, and that turns into ammonia in the water. That's why it's important to do water change so you don't, your fish is not swimming on that consistently. And also it's important to have a good filtration system so the bacteria can eat the ammonia. And I'm gonna to try to explain a little bit better so you guys can understand um, how to, to do that. But a lot, of, a lot of, another one too that they, I get these calls and say, I start up the tank, I have it up and running for two weeks, it's cycle. I even use my old tank water. Okay, so this is the thing. Old tank water, all you're doing is putting dirty water into the new tank because the bacteria that, the hell? A bacteria does not live in the water. Bacteria lives in a substrate, okay? So for example, like the driftwood, the sand, the filtration, all the substrate in, in the tank and in the filtration, that's what your bacteria is gonna be. In the bio balls, in the lava rock, in the movable media, in the, or the sand filter, that's where all the bacteria is gonna be. So it's important for you to have a good a good uh, uh, bacteria colony. So the, that's why I like sumps, okay? Because the sump, the bigger the sump, the more you can add to it. The more you can add to it, the better, all right? Because let's say, if you have a lot of fish, you need to make sure that you have a lot of media in that sump for the bacteria to live 
to be able to eat out their ammonia. Because what happens is, if you don't have enough uh, uh, bacterial colony, let's say this way, in the tank, and your fish is creating more ammonia than the bacteria can eat, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have an ammonia spike and that ammonia is gonna kill the bacteria colony. So you're gonna have a bigger ammonia spike and then all your fish are gonna die. So let's talk about quick, easy steps that you could take to, uh, let's say you're in a situation where, boom, you got your tank and you bought a fish, you didn't know, okay, best thing you can do, go to the store, buy a couple of cheap fish, put them in there, get a, a bottle of live bacteria, there's a bunch of them, there's different brands, and it all work, okay? Just throw it in there, you can't even overdo it, just put as much as the, that little bottle would do. Um, and now you added more fish, so what's gonna happen is you're creating more ammonia, so all the bacteria that's starting there, they're gonna start eating all that ammonia and they're gonna get stronger faster and they're gonna colonize faster. But now, I'm not saying go ahead and throw like 30 fish in there, but if you only bought one fish, it's gonna take even longer. So go ahead and get like three, four, five fish, put them in a tank, make sure that they're cheap because you know eventually they're gonna turn into food for whatever fish you end up buying. Um, but they're helping colonize that bacteria faster and this way your tank is gonna be cycled faster. That's what cycle a tank means, okay, or mean. You, um, just by having the tank up and running, you're not doing anything, okay? You Maybe you're removing the chlorine out of the water, um, um, the ammonium. Mm. When you start a tank, if your water's good, then you should have no ammonia. But the right way, guys, or let's say you have another tank that's up and running already with fish for months and everything's doing well, <clears throat> you can take some media from that tank and put in your new tank to save your fish. So you can, you can cycle your tank super fast just by having, let's say you get a bag of bio balls that's already running in an old uh, tank and then swipe it up. Now don't take all the media from that tank because now that, those fish are gonna uh, suffer because you're taking all the colony out. So just take some of it. Okay, and then replace a new one, and this way the old bacteria that's on other stuff on the tank are gonna colonize that new, um, let's say, lava rock or bio balls that you put in that tank. But it's very, very, very important that you do the steps because your fish, you will die. I had a customer one time that bought a uh, Armanos. This one was for me. And uh, about a week later, he called me and says, hey Rod, you know, I got the fish, everything looked great, but he won't eat. And I tried live, and even live he won't eat, and which is very, this guy keeps hitting the, the, the acrylic, I can feel it. Uh, which is very random for a um, armadas not to eat live, because that's what they eat in the wild. So he said he put the feeder in the tank, and the next day, the armadas killed all the feeder fish, but he doesn't eat them. So right away, I was like, okay, you're getting very lucky because you're having an ammonia spike, and it's killing the feeder fish because they're weak fish but the Armada's is taking a hit and he's able to survive for a week, but he's not gonna survive for much longer. So best thing to do, get a bottle of uh, live bacteria, throw some more feeder fish in there, do a little water change, and boom. Not even two, three days later, he said the, the fish are better, the Armada's start eating everybody, and he was happy, he was good to go. So sometimes it's just a little, little, little step you gotta take to learn and um, be able to save a fish life, you know? And, and this way you're gonna be happy, you're not gonna be upset with the store that you bought the fish from, you're not gonna be upset that, oh man, I got into the hobby and I'm just spending money and um, <clears throat> this is not for me. No, it is, it's just, it's gonna take time, okay? You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna learn. I made a lot of mistakes. Some people call me, oh man, I love you, you're the best, you're the best, isn't it? Trust me, I made a lot of mistakes and I still learn today. Uh, before I opened Predatory Fins, I bought a silver, a 24 inch silver iguana from a guy that had it in a 75 gallon tank. I was like, man, I'm so happy. I saved this fish life and I'm my favorite fish. And um, I had it on a 125, which is not ideal, but at the time that's what I could afford and what I could uh, get Lisa to agree to in our moving office. And I used to sit there and just watch that fish. I loved that fish. I had maybe three to four fish in that tank. And one day, I was at the gym parking lot, took a pre-workout, and I was just waiting to kick in so I could go in. And I looked up, I can't remember if it was Craigslist, OfferUp, or, or I can't remember what um, site was. 
but I found a 300 gallon tank glass with a beautiful canopy and a base for, I think it was 700 bucks. So I messaged them right away and said, hey, is this still available? And they said, yes, come today to pick it up. I said, if I come right now, what's the best price you can do? And I think she said like 500, I don't remember. Uh, so obviously I call Lisa and I'm like, babe, look, there's a tank that I cannot pass. The lady's giving me a deal of a lifetime. I have to go pick it up. She said, how much? And I did what every man would do, you know. 300 bucks. I had to do it. Uh, so she agreed to it. I called my moving guys. Can you stop? I'm trying to focus. I'm by myself here. Don't forget, I rescued you. Uh, so we went down to Homestead, which is about an hour, an hour and a half from us. And I picked up the tank, and man, I was so happy. I put it in the office, I set it up, I filled it up with water. I took my fish and put it in that tank. And all I did was put prime and um, start, you know, start up, whatever. There's little bottles that says start up kit and stuff like that. Put that in there. So happy. I was just watching the marijuana, so much space for her, you know. It's such a beautiful tank. And the next day I come into work and everything was dead. Everything. The marijuana was just like standing there like this. And I was like, man, what the hell? Like, I was so sad because not only I did all that in a rush to give them a better home, I killed all of them for not knowing, for lack of knowledge. Okay? So I don't want that to happen to you guys. And there's plenty of videos out there. Like I learned a lot from King of, G uh, King of DIY, Joey. Um, there's videos, you can learn everything on YouTube these days online. You can learn literally how to do anything if you want to do it. So instead of being rushed, trying to do something that's not gonna work, take your time, do it the right way, and you're gonna be happy at the end. I promise you that. Um, all these tanks that I have here, I always overdo on filtration because of that. Because I have a lot of fish. And even though having a lot of fish, I have a lot of filtration. Like I'm gonna take you guys now and show, especially in this tank here, um, we have a bunch of stingrays. We have, uh, I just rescued a couple of kois. We have arapaimas, arawanas, a bunch of fish. But I still do about 30 to 40% water change every week, even though my filtration is like over. Because I wanna make sure that they're swimming and taking in fresh, clean water. That's how the fish looks healthy. That's how um, you see the, the colors, everything. Everything changes when you're, when you're giving the fish what they need, which is clean water and good food. Now, food is another one, okay? You gotta remember, you gotta remember that not every fish will eat the same thing. Like, I can't feed this guy tilapia or shrimp. He might not eat it, but believe it or not, this weirdo, we have bananas, just like the turtle. So every fish is different. Now you might get a gourami that will eat tilapia. You might get a koi that will eat another fish. You never know, every fish is different. So when you do get a fish, try different foods. Don't try the same thing. If it's not eating that one thing, stop. Don't keep doing that because all you're doing is creating ammonia in the tank. I'm sure you might not even see it. It's just sitting there. One of the number one fish that people buy and uh, they love it because they, they like the way the fish eats is the gopher cat, okay? Now, having so many of them here, <laughs> this fish is nuts. Having so many of them here, it's funny because he's 18 years old, this, this Gurami. And um, we rescued him, his owner passed away. And his wife uh, called a friend and he went there and picked him up and brought it to us and he's doing great. He's got like Nemo fins and stuff. So, anyways, back to the gophers. They eat a lot, okay? And they will eat a, a fish bigger than their body. So you cannot put any other fish with a gopher, but you can add other gophers into the tank. They won't eat each other. I, I made a test here with really big gophers and small ones that won't mess with the small ones. But I also made a test, and I'll try it again today, see if we can get it on camera, that I threw food in the tank. Nothing. Shut off the light. One of them moving around a little bit more because they're nocturnal fish. Gopher catfish, they prefer to eat at night. But during the day, 
or all, pretty much all the time, they're hiding between driftwood or bushes or plants or uh, whatever. They're, 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 they're high. They're bush eaters. They're not chasing fish. That's why when you see videos of gophers, basically they swim next to a fish and then they just turn and eat them. That's what they do in the wild. So what I did, and I'll try it again today, is I actually put a piece of shrimp right in front of his face and he took it. But there was shrimp sitting in the tank that he wasn't eating. So sometimes it's just, you just gotta be creative and try different things to see what your fish are gonna do. Um, a lot of fish are easy to feed, like this guy right here with pellets and like I said, bananas. Um, arowanas, we pretty much anything. Peacocks, you know, if you, if you train them well, you can get them on everything, even pellets. Um, not every peacock is gonna be like that. Every fish is different, every fish have different personalities. As an example, I have a detonoid that I have for over six years. It was the most beautiful detonoid that uh, I had. A friend of mine actually gave it to me, and now it only eats live. No matter what I do, I, you know, he could be, he would starve to death, but he will only eat live. So, like I said, every fish is different, um, but hopefully you guys learn and if you already knew, now you're 100% sure of how to cycle a tank, okay? It's very, 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 very important that you do that and you take the steps to keep this fish alive. Look, I'm gonna take you and show you real quick. If they're not eating for you right away, try shutting off the light. Oh, there you go.